Hi everybody and thank you for joining me in the new video presentation regarding ECG exercise number 20. I hope you will enjoy it and join me here in my future video presentations. Thank you. Our patient is a 45 year old man with frequent episodes of palpitation and documented wide QRS complex tachycardia who was admitted to another hospital. In the past medical history, he had no syncope, no family history of sudden cardiac death. Cardiac MRI showed a normal ejection fraction, no late gadolinium enhancement, and right ventricle was normal. Before looking at the ECG during sinus rhythm and also the 12 lead ECG during tachycardia, here let's have a quick review of three major major categories of wide QRS complex tachycardias. The first one is ventricular tachycardia, which usually comprises 80% of all wide QRS complex tachycardia. In those who are older than 35 years old, the prevalence of VT increases to 85 to 90% as in our patient. The second category is antidromic atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. And the third category is a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction. So here we see the 12 bit ECG during tachycardia, we see a white QRS complex tachycardia with negative concordance. So the negative concordance may suggest a ventricular tachycardia. So what might be the reason to have such a ventricular tachycardia? We have to consider, for example, arrhythmogenic right ventricular tachycardia as the underlying uh, pathology. We also we have to think of apical VTs with different uh, underlying etiologies like ischemic heart disease or sarcoidosis or whatever. Besides from ventricular tachycardia, we see in this this ECG and a stable VA association. So now we have two possibilities, still a ventricular tachycardia with a stable VA conduction. The second possibility would be a supraventricular tachycardia. Now in the second ECG, we see the first clue to the possible diagnosis. So in this ECG, in the second baseline ECG, we see the spontaneous induction of the clinical tachycardia. A premature atrial contraction induces the tachycardia. So with this type of induction, and VA association, now we think about supraventricular tachycardia either with aberrant conduction or AVRT. And with this ECG pattern, if we are thinking about an antidromic AVRT, we have to think about Maheim accessory pathway. Now we go forward and look at some additional ECG and intracardiac electrograms to find out the correct diagnosis. So in the previous ECG, we saw a spontaneous induction. And here during EP study, we are also able to induce the tachycardia with single PAC and this also suggests a supraventricular tachycardia as the underlying arrhythmia. This 12 lead ECG during tachycardia help us to differentiate between antidromic AVRT and SVT with aberrant conduction as the underlying cause of white QRS complex tachycardia. On the left side, we see our clinical white QRS complex tachycardia and then one PVC from right ventricle. And after that, the tachycardia continues as in a small QRS complex tachycardia. So, this finding excludes antidromic AVRT because during tachycardia, it's impossible to change the direction suddenly. And this PVC and after that, a small QRS complex tachycardia suggests an SVT with aberrant conduction as the underlying mechanism of our white QRS complex tachycardia. And now in next ECGs and also intracardiac electrogram, we can see together the underlying diagnosis. So now in this intracardiac electrogram, the diagnosis is clear. We have a breakout in coronary sinus, left-sided accessory pathway. The HV interval is longer during tachycardia compared to the sinus rhythm. So alone with HV interval, we can exclude antidromic AVRT and both findings together suggest left-sided accessory path pathway orthodromic AVRT with left bundle branch block aberrancy as the underlying cause of white QRS complex tachycardia in our patient, despite negative concordance in ECG. Now we see the same tachycardia with a small QRS complex. The HP interval is shorter, of course, but we see still the same break pattern in the coronary sinus. So after the diagnosis, the accessory pathway was successfully ablated. And here we see ventricular stimulation with the same cycle length as the clinical tachycardia showing two to one conduction over AV node. And we have no conduction over accessory pathway. 
So, in conclusion, our patient with white QRS complex tachycardia and negative concordance might have suggested a ventricular tachycardia as the underlying mechanism of the white QRS complex tachycardia. However, the induction of the tachycardia with PAC and the APS study confirmed the diagnosis of orthodromic AVRT using a left-sided accessory pathway with left bundle branch block aberrant conduction as the underlying cause of these white QRS complex tachycardia. I hope you enjoyed this ECG exercise and I would like to invite you joining me here in my future video presentations. Thank you.